Hey, good morning. Happy Sunday, everybody. Mark again here at Weatherman Plus. I'm going to show you what's going to happen as far as this upper level low, this surface low that does form up in the Gulf. Euro has been showing some strength lately, although GFS, which always picks it up before the Euro in any of these storms that happens tropical, subtropical, this is going to be front induced. But I've always been showing that this has been a weak system. Now, I've been seeing a few people try and make this bigger than actually what it is. So I'm going to go through all the impacts that you could possibly get from this storm guys make sure you subscribe i am all year long now let's go through what you have now of course there's nothing within the next five days from national hurricane center because we are in december <laughs> so we look through the global cyclones according to all the models you can see the euro does take it a little strong right before it goes over florida and that blue is 980 to 999 GFS takes it weak over Florida. It's always been showing that. I'll show you that. But the UK Met also takes it strengthening right before it goes over Florida. When you look at a potential velocity anomaly, according to the Euro, you can see that it's not that strong of a system. It gets a little bit of strength before it goes landfall over Florida. And then it gets a little bit of strength on the southeast coast as it leaves. But you can see the same upper level low that came from the southwest and i'm showing this pattern will continue this will happen again guys but it forms the upper level low that becomes a surface low As a matter of fact this is going to be a front induced low pressure system and it will get into the gulf but it's going to be squeezed by two high pressures you're going to have a building high pressure off in the southeast and you got the cold front coming down smashing it down really limiting the time that it has but you can see there it does strengthen right before south carolina towards North Carolina, and then it gets smushed away. The National Weather Service did put a marginal for severe weather as you go from Tuesday into Wednesday for Florida. And there is a probability of some severe weather because there will be a front coming down with some thunderstorms going south down Florida as this goes across. So far it is in Jacksonville, Florida, Miami, Florida, Tampa, Florida, St. Petersburg, Florida, and Hialeah, Florida for the severe weather. But National Hurricane Center did put out some information that we could use and you can see as you go forward 12 hours it does strengthen up right below louisiana but then it weakens down right before florida and then it strengthens up again as it leaves over florida but the official report is a cold front that stretches early this morning from the florida panhandle to just south of brownsville texas will move slowly south today with strong north winds behind it Frequent gusts to gale force are expected this morning along the Texas coast. Low pressure will form along this front in the central Gulf Monday, then move northeast into the southeast U.S. Tuesday. This will accelerate the front eastward through the Gulf by Tuesday night. This low will likely bring strong winds to portions of the north central and the northeast Gulf of Mexico. Winds and seas will subside Wednesday through Thursday in the wake of the front as weak high pressure builds in across the Gulf. You can see with the dew points as it moves in, there is some high 60s dew points and some 70s for lower Florida. So this will bring some severe thunderstorms, but it's carrying enough dew points to keep these thunderstorms going, guys. Only thing is this cold front is shearing this thing so much it can't keep storms around the center. Now, National Weather Service has it for Monday evening, surface low forming in the Gulf of Mexico. All this red area is your chances for your thunderstorms. As you go into Tuesday morning around 7 a.m., it will be somewhere off the coast of Tampa, and you can see the thunderstorms. Then as you go to Wednesday, early a.m., it's going to be off the coast of South Carolina. So when we check with the chances of just a tropical depression strength, you can see in the next 72 hours that you literally have a 25 to a 30% chance of a tropical depression to form. It's not a very big chance. And in four days and five days, it will be even weaker as it goes by South Carolina. And just for kicks and giggles, I checked for a tropical storm. And you can see it has the same thing, 25 to 30% chance of a tropical storm, a tropical depression to form. And it will be front induced. Now the Euro does show that there is some vorticity in this storm. And as you go 24 hours later, it will be off the coast of Georgia, South Carolina. And it will be a little bit stronger than it'll be gone, stretched out. Now the one thing that was concerning is the Euro is showing that the maximum wind gusts could get up to 90 miles per hour, especially in the Gulf. But all this brown you see on the edge, this is all 70 miles per hour wind gusts. And this orange you see going over Florida, that is 50 miles per hour with a pocket of 60. All this green is all 40s, high 40s to low 40s. As well as the southeast, you can see you got all 40 miles per hour wind gusts with a chance for 50 in Georgia. And here's a little closer look for you. It's pretty much from Tallahassee, Florida, under Panhandle, all the way up to the Carolinas with the 40s and possible 50s over northern Florida, especially Jacksonville. 
and then strengthen up a little bit more. So I definitely showed that you, if anything, you have definitely some rip tides they need to think about as this system passes by. But so far, it'd be somewhere around Tampa with 40 and start gaining up as you go towards Jacksonville, Jenna, Palm Coast, the whole area with a chance for 50 miles per hour wind gusts as this system passes by. But once again, this is only by the Euro. It's showing Cedar Keys could see 68 miles per hour, but it did show up to 88, 90 miles per hour in the Gulf of Mexico. But once again, you go by the GFS, it's not showing any of that, guys. It's maybe a chance for 20s. It does take it a little bit southern because as it gets hit with this cold front, it separates into two pieces. And this will bring storms on down. So maybe some 40 miles per hour wind gusts for Tampa. You take it according to the Euro, it's showing about the same thing. The only thing that's questionable is northern Florida. But you can see according to the GFS, and the GFS always showed this system pretty weak. Maybe in 36 hours, get up to 60 knot winds, which is about 65 miles per hour winds. But if you watch it, you'll see it just weakens greatly right before Florida, down to 33 knot winds. And then as it crosses, it stays weak as it leaves. Just to get as much data as we can, the NAM 3K shows it could get up to 50 and 60, maybe even the high 60 miles per hour wind gusts, but it will weaken greatly right before Florida, before it goes to the other side. The NAM 12K can see four days, so it can follow the track a little bit through, but it shows 40 and high 50 miles per hour wind gusts. That's it, 40s and high 50s. You might get a pocket of 50 on the way across to southeast in Georgia and 30s and 40s for South Carolina and Georgia as well. And that's that's pretty much shown by all the models. It's going to be about 30s and 40s. And you can see with the shear, you can see how the storm forms up in the Gulf. Now, as this upper level low comes into the Gulf, it does get a front-induced low pressure. But the trough don't seem too deep. Euro takes it where it's a little bit deeper and stronger of a trough. That's why it's a stronger system. But the GFS has always showed this to be a weak storm. But just to be well-rounded, the Euro does take it down towards Florida, down to a 997, strengthening up. And you can see a lot of the storms is on the north side of this. But as it goes across, it stays weak, and then it gets strong towards South Carolina and towards North Carolina. But as it goes by South Carolina and North Carolina, it continues to strengthen up down to a 989. So I will bring some winds. Now, as far as the wind gust goes, the Euro shows it starts picking up wind gusts, starts getting into the 70s right before a landfall by Florida, even gets up to 87 miles per hour wind gusts right before landfall, bringing 50s to y'all. But then it crosses over and it stays 50s and goes across to the southeast. Then it starts strengthening right back up again on its way out. But you can see it's elongated, so it's not really going to impact South Carolina like it could if it was strengthening up real close. And when you look at the 10 meter winds to see what the strength is possibility on this storm, you can see it gets all the way down to about 52 knots. That's about 60 miles per hour winds, guys. Maybe 55, 60 miles per hour winds. It'll have the strength of a tropical depression, a weak tropical storm. Then as it goes across Florida, very weak system bringing 30 miles per hour winds. And then it goes across the southeast and starts strengthening right back up. Now, even with the worst case scenario of what the Euro is seeing, it is seeing 40 and a chance for 50 miles per hour wind gusts along the coast as it goes by the Carolinas, but mostly you're going to be in the high 30s. Maybe hit 40 on the way out as it strengthens up, but along the coast of North Carolina, you could see still some 60 miles per hour wind gusts just like I showed the other day. Now, the Canadian model does show that it does stay weak as it goes across Florida, but it does show that it does strengthen up just like the Euro was saying, as it passes by the Carolinas. So there's a chance for precipitation and some damage and wind gusts possibly along the coast of the Carolinas, but it's no effect to anybody in the Northeast neither. It still stays at 989. It still barely misses y'all, just like Friday. Matter of fact, if you look through all the ensembles of the Euro, you can see that the Euro actually isn't accurate at all with what's going on because all the ensembles say that there's no way it would be a nine anything if anything, it'd be a 1,000 millibar system, and then after it crosses over Florida, then it has a chance to strengthen up and get down to the 900s of the millibars. It's not showing that any of the ensembles will do anything before Florida, guys. If anything, this would be a weak thunderstorm system that will pass by. That's it. Now, the Euro also shows that it will weaken as it goes as far as precipitation goes, but you can see the precipitation going into the panhandle of Florida right there. 
And that yellow is an inch to inch and a half, and that red is where you're getting up to two inches of rainfall. And this is every six hours. Six hours later, you get another heavy amount of precipitation right here in the Panhandle of Florida and southern Georgia. Six more hours, the heavy precipitation will move across southern Georgia, then it'll weaken down as it goes by the Carolinas with the rainfall. If anything, it'll be an inch or two, but it is showing a possibility of heaviness for the Panhandle of Florida and southern Georgia. But if you look real close, you'll see that it does form up nice, but then the cold front comes down and smashes it and separates it. It goes into two pieces. It literally forms up good in 48 hours, but then it gets separated. And one piece goes over to southeast with precipitation, while the rest goes down Florida, bringing some storms to them as well. Wave height, not showing any threat neither. At the most, you might have four or five feet foot waves coming by you. It will bring 10 or 11 foot waves with it as it passes by, but it's not going to be anything close to land. Maybe by Tampa, you might get up to seven or eight feet, but it weakens greatly as it comes by. Nothing ever gets over seven or eight feet as this passes by. Even a Euro that shows just crazy winds, which does show it does strengthen right off the coast of the Florida Panhandle, but the maximum waves you can get, guys, would be four to five feet on both sides. That's about it. And when you look through all the ensembles, according to the GFS, GFS has always picked up a storm system way before the Euro, and it's always showed it to be weak. You can see it right there on Tuesday. None of them take it out of 1,000 millibars. Matter of fact, none of them take it out of 1,005 millibars. Very weak system. It has a chance to strengthen as it leads, but it's not showing a lot of promise at all. This is going to be a disorganized group of thunderstorms. Could get a rotation, could get a, a nice strong surface low, guys, that will bring some heavy precipitation, some possible damage and winds. But nothing I would panic or worry about at all. And when I checked a blend of National Weather Service models, it shows there's a possibility to get up to two inches of rainfall for the southeast. That's the worst that we have out of this. That's it. According to the Euro, as this passes by, it could bring over four inches of rainfall towards Tallahassee, an inch or two for everybody for Georgia and South Carolina. But mostly it is showing Tallahassee with the most. Panama City, Tallahassee, Valdosta, Georgia, Douglas, Vidalia. And then it weakens as it goes towards South Carolina with an inch, two inches at most. And also North Carolina it could bring y'all an inch, two inches at most, mostly for Fayetteville and Raleigh. But everybody else, a little over an inch. So it is going to bring some precipitation to y'all. Avon, be aware, you could get three inches. And that is where I showed 60 miles per hour winds of the system on Friday. But the GFS don't show that at all, guys. It shows this front really handles this storm really good. But it could bring heavy rainfall to Brunswick, Georgia, over three inches. Jacksonville, Florida, almost three inches. And it just gets very light amounts. A little over an inch, two inches at most. But Jacksonville, Brunswick, Tallahassee, just be aware the models are showing y'all with heavy rainfall. And I waited for the latest run to see what the update was. You know how we get up updates on Euro now in the morning. And it's showing maybe 30 to 40 miles per hour wind gusts. That's about it, guys. Maybe something off the coast of Georgia and South Carolina. Definitely watch out for riptides. But the update shows maybe 70 miles per hour. So <laughs> that 90 looks like it's gone. Euro was never accurate with a tropical system. But you can see how it builds up with the Euro. It comes through the Gulf for Wednesday into Tuesday morning. Then it starts going over Florida for Tuesday pretty weak system then as it goes over florida it starts strengthening up a little bit more so it could bring a wind field in this area some precipitation as well but it's not showing a lot of strength and a lot of promise guys this is only by the euro and we all know how the euro did for hurricane season it's it was terrible it wasn't accurate at all but you could be getting some rainfall definitely for tallahassee as you go through tuesday could be also for Palm Coast and Jacksonville, Florida, as you go through Tuesday. Then Southern Georgia, then I'll go out by South Carolina for late night Tuesday into Wednesday, and travel a little bit into North Carolina as it leaves. And if you look, according to the GFS, on the storm coming into Florida, and you check the last runs, we can go back 20 times, it's never taken it out of 1,005, 1,006 millibar strength. It was always a weak system. And GFS has always picked up any system in our tropics 
way before the Euros. So I don't know what the Euros case was. Euros been wrong ever since a long time ago. There's something wacky about it. But as his upper level low goes over Texas, it will be leaving Texas by tomorrow morning, 5, 6 o'clock in the morning. It'll be over Louisiana. And we have this possibility of this front end due system that could be affecting Florida. So had to stay on top of it. Had, had to do an update, guys. I've seen people already talking about possible hurricane, all this stuff in the Gulf. And that's just ridiculous. And that's about it, guys. I'm still not showing it's not really no big worries. You could get some heavy precipitation. There could be some 40 miles per hour wind gusts that come to y'all. That is what the trend is. I don't know what Euro's problem is. Never could figure out what was wrong with that thing. It's just never used it because it was inaccurate. But I know a lot of people live by that model, so just be aware. There's no hurricane coming. There's no... <laughs> There's not even a tropical storm coming. This thing is not going to have that much strength to it on the way out. Yeah, good possibility. Hope y'all continue to have a great Sunday. Thank you so much for visiting my channel today. Psalm 12. Help, Lord, for the godly man seizeth, for the faithful fail from among the children of men. They speak vanity, every one with his neighbor, with flattering lips, and with a double heart do they speak. The Lord shall cut off all flattering lips, and the tongue that speaketh proud things. Who have said with our tongue, will we prevail? Our lips are our own. Who is Lord over us? For the oppression of the poor, for the sighing of the needy, now will I arise, saith the Lord. I will set him in safety from him that puffeth at him. The words of the Lord are pure words, as silver tried in a furnace of earth, purified seven times. Thou shalt keep them, O Lord. Thou shalt preserve them from this generation forever. The wicked walk on every side when the vilest men are exalted. <laughs> Amen. How true that is. God bless you all today. Hope you have a very blessed day today. All power, all glory <laughs> does go to Yahweh, God of Jacob. <laughs> and he will strengthen us. He will not let the evil, exalted people overcome you. Have a very blessed day today. Thank you again for visiting my channel. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah, guys. God bless you all.